The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome to GCV Analytics webinar. Today we're going to discuss the IT sector and we also have a special guest speaker, um, Jeff Carlson from Cubix Analytics, who's going to give us some data insights on GCV's data. But uh, first, I'm going to give the word to our uh, founder and editor-in-chief, uh, James Mawson, for some brief introductory remarks. Jim? Wonderful. Well, thanks very much, Kalyan and Tanov. It's been a real pleasure to sort of see the data and insights that you and Jeff have been able to pull together. So thank you very much to you both for being able to join on the webinar today. So as uh, Kalyan said, we actually do three publications. This is Global Corporate Venturing's data, but across the publication more senior that we do, we do Global Government Venturing and Global University Venturing as well. And just a quick mention about what we're trying to do here. Effectively, we're acting like a trade paper. We're trying to understand who does corporate venturing or university and government venturing, how do they commit indirectly to funds, the VC funds that will invest directly in deals, and also how do they invest directly in startups or support them through accelerators and incubators. If you think about the five basic needs of an entrepreneur, they, they're looking very much for capital, customers, product development, hiring, and an exit. And corporations in particular, they uh, probably can help in almost all those areas. So it's very interesting to see the development, not just in terms of the deals, but across the ecosystem, how important corporations in particular are. And if you think about the universities, very much through student, faculty, startups, and spin-outs, they are very much responsible for many of the entrepreneurs as they develop out. And then the governments obviously are trying to convene and develop the ecosystems so that the next generation of high paying jobs and resources and benefits flow to their countries. Uh, Cubix Analytics, we've been delighted to work over the years with Cubix. They've been very much laser focused on applying their expertise in terms of helping companies make better use of their data in the private equity and venture funding areas to transform the data from a burden to competitive advantage. And we've been very fortunate to be working with Jeff and his colleague Tim York uh, over the past few years to help understand our own data and make it more relevant for our customers inside the community. We'll hear a little bit more from Jeff later. And then GCV, Global Corporate Venture and Analytics, is our tool, our front end, to allow the customers to be able to see and analyze the data that comes through the publications and the daily news on www.globalcorporateventure.com. To see more about GCV Analytics, visit gcvanalytics.com. And to learn more about the other things that we do within the publications, such as our academy, academy help in the training, and uh, the events we do, such as the GCVI Summit in California, uh, which will be at the end of January. And we had uh, more than 700 people, which is about six and a half trillion dollars in aggregate annual revenue from the corporations, attending more than 100 billion in venture assets under management. The next events we have coming up, we're partnering uh, with Tencent and a number of others in Hong Kong with an academy there. We're working with the Brazil government, uh, that uh, GCD Asia Congress, by the way, will be 20th of September in Hong Kong. We're working with the government down in Brazil for APAX's Brazil Corporate Venture in Brazil conference, which will be the first week of October, 2nd through 4th. And then we're back up through into the US for New York, for Houston, and then on into uh, California. New York will be the first week of November, 2nd of November. Houston, which will combine the corporate venture in energy sector with our global university venture in uh, uh, sort of analysis and Gov Power List 100 will be the 8th and 9th of November. And then, as I mentioned, the uh, California event will be the final week of January 30th and 31st. So I'll hand over now to Kalyan to give me a quick overview in terms of the venture data more broadly, and then we'll drill down through Jeff's insights in terms of the core for venture in peace. Thanks, Jim. So um, a quick uh, overview of the uh, total VC activity, um, according to some recent publications. Um, the past two quarters, uh, according to uh, data from PitchBook that was published in the PitchBook NVCA Venture Monitor were uh, the two strongest quarters that we've seen in US venturing activity in a decade. Um, as you can see here, uh, not so much not so much in terms of the number of deals closed, but more so in terms of the uh, total 
total dollar deal value uh, that you can see it's uh, well well over um, well over 20 well, well over 25 and uh, 35 uh, billion billion dollars um, along with that um, according to pitchbooks data we also have uh, have seen a lot of activity um, in terms of unit uh, in terms of unicorns raising new rounds and it does seem like um, 2018 is poised to to see a record number of, of such rounds in the United States as this uh, this graph shows um, and this has not been uh, a development endemic only to the US um, it's been um, it's been, you know, a record hitting VC activity level globally, actually. And uh, this chart is from uh, the Venture Pulse publication by KPMG, also using PitchBooks data. Um, so uh, if, if you look at this, uh, if you look at this chart, there's definitely uh, been a been a record in, in the second quarter of, uh, of 2018. And um, that was uh, 69.8 billion uh, dollars of capital that was spread over uh, 3,100 deals all over the world, and most of it was actually um, from the U.S. and Asia, in particular China. So in the U.S., um, in the second quarter, we we had uh, 27.3 billion dollars of capital uh, that was spread over uh, 1,859 rounds. Um, in Asia, there were 35 billion uh, that was spread over 466 deals, a considerably considerably lower number in comparison uh, in comparison with, uh, with with the U.S. and uh, hence uh, the median sort of round size uh, in Chinese deals is uh, much, uh, much larger, or that's how it comes up on the data. But Jeff will talk more, more on that. And uh, now Jim might want to have uh, a few remarks on, on this, uh, on this sort of development, Jim. Yeah, thanks so much, Kelly. I'm really interested in to see the overall data analysis in terms of the the overall venture capital ecosystem. But one of the things that really catches the eye, given where we are in terms of the economic cycle, is that sharp fall off in the early stage in angel seed rounds in terms of venture capital. And one thought about that is perhaps entrepreneurs at that earlier stage are finding better or alternative sources of funding which are effectively more efficient for them. So in effect, the growth, the rapid growth in the initial coin offerings, the ICOs, um, friends and families, maybe angel investors. I think what we're starting to see here is that the classic analysis of using venture capital money you know, in a round isn't as attractive for entrepreneurs if they can find the money other ways through competition, grants, government sources, corporates, different areas. And I just think that we'll be interested to see if that sort of, in effect, disruption that we're seeing um, actually starts to creep into the later stage rounds. But certainly I think what we'll find out is that the later stage rounds have already been transformed. So Jeff, over to you in terms of what we're seeing in terms of corporate venture capital. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you, James and Kalyan. What One thing I noted looking at uh, kind of comparing the data that um, Kalyan just showed, uh, there's roughly 129 billion uh, total VC investment over the, the, the first two quarters or the first half of 2018. And what you're going to see in the numbers I'm showing is I, I was curious how much corporate in, involvement there is in all of that corporate, that overall VC investment. It looks like about two thirds by dollars. Um, of that 129 billion this year, roughly uh, two thirds of the by dollars, uh, there's at least one corporate involved in that, which is interesting um, to see. And, and that trend seems to have been increased over time. Um, so now let's uh, go ahead and take a look at um, what's happening in the corporate world. So um, what I'm gonna show you is what's been happening um, through up through the first half of 2018 uh, in investments where there's been at least one corporate that's been participating in those each of those deals. So what we call CVC investments, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that's the amount that the corporates themselves have put into these, 
uh, investments, but rather um, investments that have been made where corporate has participated. Since since generally the the, the uh, bite size or the amounts invested by each individual investor isn't publicly known in most investments, um, you know we really don't we don't break it down to how much money is actually coming from the corporates, but rather the money that's been involved where there's a, a, a corporate participation in that. So now take a look at uh, the numbers of deals that have gone on over uh, the last few years. Uh, we see a fairly modest increase in the numbers of deals in which corporates have been involved over the last three, four years. You know, we're up to just, just shy of 1,400 deals this uh, first half of 2018 where there's been at least one corporate involved in that. And it's roughly like a 5% year over year increase over the last five, uh, sorry, last three years going from about 1,200 back in 2015 up to about 1400 now. So so it's um you know a modest increase in the numbers of investment uh, rounds. But if we look at the dollars associated with that very much like what you saw from Callahan looking at the overall VC investment, we see a tremendous uh, change and increase in the in the dollars that have been invested. First half of this year uh, 87 billion dollars invested um, with it again with at least one corporate participant participant in each of those investments um, and that's a significant increase um, you know it's the highest ever it, that we've seen um, with corporate involvement you know it's 25 percent higher than it was a year prior to that and it's you know 2x if you look at the last 12 months um, you know it's essentially doubled from the, the 12 months prior to that uh, so that's a significant increase in the number of you know investments that have been happening um so where is this money going that's kind of an obvious question what where where are the the portfolio companies that are receiving this money what what countries are they in and if we start looking breaking that down by um receiving country and again what i mean by receiving country is the location of the portfolio companies that are receiving this this these investments uh, a couple things jump out at you. Well, first, the red, you can see what's happening with China. Um, that's been an absolute explosion in terms of the amount of money that has gone into China. There was a trend that was uh, coming along, you can see over the last few years, where the U.S. has been the leader, uh, other than a, a, a small reversal of that back in uh, first half of 2016, the U.S. has been the leader up until this last uh, basic half year where China has just skyrocketed past the US and US now being a distant second in terms of money invested you know, in portfolio companies in that country. Uh, for simplicity, I'm showing China, US, and then everybody else, because even still today, everybody else is still kind of a distant third um, as you look at that. Um, you know, US and China being the two biggies. But again, uh, this is significant. China has taken off, you know, a, a, is receiving significantly more money than they were in the past. And if we look at that uh, trend by portions, you know, look at the, the breakdown as a percent of the, the total invested in each half year, um, you see a couple things right off the bat here. The blue bars being the percentage of investments that have been received by US companies. And you can see a pretty obvious downward trend, you know, up at 81% at the beginning of the bar down to, you know, 32% by, uh, you know, in this last half year. Um, at the same time, the rest of the world is kind of bouncing between, I think, 11% 11, uh, 11 and maybe 30%. Um, no obvious long-term trend there. It kind of seems to bounce between those numbers. Um, and then the obvious one, the, the the biggie is China. Now you see that for the first time they have over 50% of the money uh, went into China, which basically is now telling you that for the first half of 2018, Chinese companies um, received more money than the entire world um, put, put combined outside of China. That's US and rest of world got less money than China itself, which is significant. That, that's huge. The last time we saw that for the US even, um, where the US was receiving more than the rest of the world, county, you know, China and rest of the world was back in 2015. So, so this is a significant uh, 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 trend and it'll be very interesting to see if this trend continues going forward, whether China continues to get more and more larger percentage of the investment money uh, with corporates going forward. 
So where, so, so if we try to look at where's that money going by sector and subsector, um, what I'm showing here is the top 15 subsectors and the color coding represents which sectors each of those subsectors are in. This is the breakdown we have in GCV Analytics, the way we break down the investments. Um, and you can see right up the bat, the, the biggie here is the payment technology and cryptocurrency with almost $15 billion um, invested in the first half of 2018. Now, many may be aware that probably the, the, biggie, the biggie there is there was an investment of $14 billion in Ant Financial in June of 2018. That's 14 billion out of this 14.7 number. Um, and it sort of overwhelms all the other numbers that are here. Um, we can talk more about that investment later, but what I wanna do is kind of remove that so we can look at everything else. So remember, that's a $14 billion investment, that's massive. But if we take that and set that aside so we can see the overall trends um, excluding that, um, here's what it looks like. And this is more along the lines of what, what we would expect to see. So the orange consumer and the brown transport, we can see those are the ones that are getting the majority of the deals. Here's how many investment deals that were done, again, in the first half. Um, and you can see logistics and supply chain services, a little over $5, $5 billion. Um, if you look at the, uh, again, in the transport, the ride hailing, car sharing, you know, vehicle marketplaces, connected autonomous vehicles, um, that's significant. So, so this kind of gives you a sense for where a lot of the money has been going, that's going into China, um, what types of companies are receiving that money. And um, so now let's look at, so what, one more way I want to look at the data is look at how much of the money going into China, how much of that is foreign money coming in? How much of the, the investor, that money coming in is coming from foreign sources versus how much is domestic? And first I wanna define foreign versus domestic, at least in the vernacular of what we're using in the presentation here. So as an example, if I had a, a portfolio company in, in France called Advise that was getting an investment, um, two investors invested in that company, their head office is France, the location of the company is France, that would be considered an only domestic investment. Pretty obvious, I think, what that represents. If, on the other hand, we had a company like Pret de Union that's located in France, had one investor whose head office was in Norway, I consider that only foreign money. So that's only money coming in from foreign sources. The third category is where you might have a company like Olivia in France, two investors, one in France and one in Sweden, um, with a total round size of 32 million, um, I'll call that hybrid. So it's a combination of money coming from the domestic source as well as from foreign sources. Reason I go through this is because on the next couple, three slides, I'm gonna now break that down and show um, the money. So if in the US, the three different colors represent how much money was invested in deals, here's the money that was foreign sourced money that was invested in US in the first half of 2017. On the other end of the spectrum, here's the domestic money that was invested. And then a little over 10, 10 billion was invested, which was a combination of both US sourced investors and those outside of the US. So what I'm showing here is just kind of a comparison. This goes back to first half of 2017, kind of what we'd expect. USA was the big leader. China was second with very little foreign only money. So most of the, the investments being made at the time were either Chinese money or a combination of Chinese plus um, foreign money coming in. The third, third biggest at that time was India with the overwhelming majority of their money coming from foreign sources. Again, no major surprise from what we see there. But now if I kind of forward on to look at the second half of 2017, U.S. has grown. China's catching up, though. You can see it's getting a significant amount. Um, and uh, again, very small portion of the China investments is, is purely foreign money. The majority of it is. So what that means is the Chinese investors are very active in all of these deals and this $20 billion that was invested at that time. Now let's fast forward to the first half of 2018 and look at what, what uh, we saw here. Now, as we already saw, the, the numbers have flipped. China, China is number one. U.S. is a distant second now, with China receiving 
you know, 30 billion, 31 billion of that money um, was a combination of both foreign and domestic money. Half of that roughly was the Ant Financial, which is a combination of both foreign and, and, and domestic, where, whereas almost 13 billion of this was Chinese money being invested in Chinese companies. So if we want to look a little bit more into who was the top investors, um, so that $30 billion here, what I'm showing here is the top investors that were involved in those hybrid investments. And the numbers here, again, don't represent the amount each of these investors have made, but it ra rather represents the total dollars of all the investments made where that investor participated. So the first thing you see is this 14 billion. These were all the investors involved in that Ant Financial investment at 14 billion. That's why they're all shown with the 14 billion there because they were participants in that. Doesn't mean they, obviously doesn't mean they, they um, invested that much themselves. Um, and then you can see 10 cents, Sequoia Capital. Um, and then here's another one where $2.5 billion deal or a combination of um, investors were involved. Likewise, looking at the domestic investments, you can see, and of course, these are all Chinese-based uh, investors. Here's all the investments that make up the, the $12.8 billion. And you see Alibaba, you know, Youngfin, uh, Tencent, um, you see Ant Financial, a lot of the, the names that you probably would expect to see invested in China. So at, in summary, really kind of just showing here's Here's the top 20 investments that were done in China in the first half of 2018. Just kind of rolling those up. Again, this made some of the, in some cases, this represents more than one investment round. So I've summed that up to show you how much was invested in the first half of 2018 in these companies that are in China and what sectors and subsectors they're involved in. Again, there's the Ant Financial is the $14 billion sort of outlier here. Um, so in summary, uh, it was a record, uh, record first half of this year and for the first time ever china has taken over first place and uh have left basically the u.s in the dust so so much that you know china now is getting more than half of all the investment money at least as of you know for the first half of this year and be very interesting to see if that trend continues going forward and with that i'm going to hand it over and kalayan and james you guys want to um yeah in this point? Yeah, thanks very much, Jeff. I'll chime in just with a couple of thoughts here. Uh, just a quick note that we will have questions at the end of the presentation, so we'll move on to the IT sector next. But if you want to be put in your questions, just uh, type them in and we'll, co we'll come to them in order. I've already seen a couple come in from Robert, so, uh, so please start typing them away. Um, just a quick thought that two points really I suppose from the sort of CVC element one of which is obviously the China data is so enormous and it's so rapid you know but a slight challenge I think that we've all identified with Chinese public reporting of the rounds is that there tends to be an overestimate if you look at uh, groups such as GDB they they broadly say they offset the Chinese numbers that are publicly reported by about 60 percent so they think that maybe up to 40 percent of you know, the deal value that's publicly announced is actually uh, um, a misrepresentation is you know they claim they're claiming too much because there's very much a uh, sort of winner take all mentality and if you're seen in a good item with the financing everything in place and you know you're more likely to attract and hire people and get the right sort of partners so I definitely think if you if you kind of take a slight uh, skewed view of the Chinese data and knock off say 40 percent that takes them back to about 30 billion or so which is still enormous um, and still very much just around the US market if not a bit bigger so I think directionally the data is interesting you know but I do think we have to have that slight view and certainly my own sort of analysis if you look at just the publicly announced unicorns so that says so like 140 or so in China have been announced over the past four or five years almost all of them have been backed by corporates but if you talk to the corporates who are involved in the rounds and you know ask them privately whether they think the public statements about the value of the company and how much has been raised they all you know broadly admit that some of it is overstatement so I think that's the first point but I think the second point, which I think is really interesting, just as we've seen overall in the venture capital market itself, there's been a drop in the 
volume of deals done at that early stage, perhaps as alternative sources of capital come in. I think certainly in terms of why we're seeing this massive ramp up in terms of the value of venture deals done, it's being driven a lot by the you know, government, sovereign wealth funds and corporates. I think if you look at all the large rounds, 100 million rounds, corporates were involved in 92, I think, uh, or so in the first half of the year, according to Callianne, he's just been doing so many analysis on that. You know, and I think what we're starting to see is the market really bifurcate. The venture capital is becoming not quite a cottage industry. You still get the real top dogs like the Sequoias out there. And but, you know, but ultimately, if you are really going to raise these massive round sizes that we're just looking here on the screen, that corporates and particular governments are involved to really drive that scale up that's happening. So if you show the traction, then you're able to do it. I think my issue is on uh, from SoftBank raised 100 billion or so for his vision fund and that's very much a uh, sort of crossover play that these companies can grow very big, very large globally and corporates are trying to really scale up and tap into that. So those would be a couple of my sort of key takeaways but you know really great data and really great insights there Jeff. So over to you Kalyan for any thoughts and then move on to the IT sector. Um, no, n nothing further to add on this, Jim. I, I guess we should just uh, move on to the to the IT sector presentation. Um, so, as our our readers and followers know, uh, in each of our monthly issues, we cover uh, a specific sector. For the July and July August issue, uh, we covered the IT sector. So, um, this presentation is a sort of a summary of the. Uh, overview that's provided in it. Um, before before we move on, it, it would be a good idea to um, acquaint people with what we mean by the IT sector, how we define it. So um, the, way, the way we define the IT sector at GCB Analytics is encompassing um, general um, artificial intelligence applications, big data and analytics, um, VR and AR technologies, uh, semiconductors and uh, microchips, uh, cybersecurity, of course, enterprise and other uh, sort of software and other uh, IT related businesses um, such as uh, web development and app development, for example. That fall under that one. Um, for some of the general trends that uh, we've been seeing in the sector, uh, and I guess we have to be mindful of those in order to explain um, what we see in uh, um, in in the uh, corporate backed realm. Um, no, the number one undoubtedly is uh, big data and the datafication that uh, almost every every industry is undergoing at the moment. Um, in addition to that, obviously, over the past um, several years, uh, there's been uh, quite a buzz in the media with uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. These these three phrases have been like the um, buzzwords, and you know they raise a lot of questions about um, opportunities and challenges uh, this sort of technology would would entail in the near and in the not so near future. Um, there. Um, there are some people who are skeptical about uh, certain challenges. They think it will fundamentally uh, change the social order as as we know it, as it uh, as automation is expected to um, place a lot of people out of their jobs. Um, so there is a lot of debate on that, obviously. Um, now, what what seems to be certain for the near near term is that it will affect automation uh, driven by AI will likely affect very much low-skilled jobs and not so much um, higher-skilled uh, sort of positions. And in terms of the opportunities, they are, uh, they are fairly obvious in terms of automation, cutting costs, um, tailoring, um, tailoring uh, products and services for, for customers, uh, streamlining user experience, and so on and so forth. So I'm not going to uh, dwell too much on that. Um, Cybersecurity is the one subsector uh, that's also been gaining momentum due to increased adoption of uh, digital technologies across industries and the increased usage of internet-connected 
mobile devices, of course. So um, there is a joke by some witty analysts that cybersecurity is the one subsector of IT that will never go out of business as long as there is any IT in that sense. Um, so um, then other than IT, of course, uh, uh, we can pass by the uh, cloud tech, which is allowing businesses to cut costs and is, of course, inextricably linked to the rise of the Internet of Things and the datafication of, and digitization of the world. Um, so we, we expect to see um, more development in it uh, as well in the, in the, in the near future, uh, even though, um, according to some, it has already entered a, a somewhat more of a mature stage as a technology. Um, VR and AR devices, um, very promising, uh, very promising uh, area, um, and you know adoption by by customers is expected to grow according to uh, industry reports within the coming three to four to five years. Uh, but it will be used for gaming and entertainment mostly, despite um, the possible much wider applications of this sort of tech. Uh, it's expected, uh, most of the revenue generated off of this will probably come from, from gaming and entertainment. Um, in terms of enterprise software, um, of course, with the um, digitization of, of every industry uh, is expected to grow to over, over uh, half a trillion dollars over the next few years. And, to allow all these other developments I've just mentioned, uh, we'll need more computing power. So chips and semiconductors are also expected to grow to meet such uh, demands. Uh, we tracked 553 deals backed by IT corporates between June last year and May this year. And as you can see on, on this map, most of them are 297 of them to be precise, uh, were raised, were rounds uh, that took place in the United States. Uh, China, kind of a distant second with 98 rounds, but still uh, very significant nonetheless. Um, and most of the, most of the, uh, the investments, most of the commitments were, uh, were in emerging enterprises from the IT sector, essentially the same sector, as you can see, 196 rounds, also media, life sciences, services, and consumer. I mentioned consumer here because, as you will see, um, actually some of the top rounds were in consumer, consumer enterprise and consumer-related enterprises, as we will see. Um, in terms of in terms of co-investments among um, among corporates, uh, as you can see uh, from this uh, sort of network diagram, uh, there were co-investments in uh, in software developers like DocuSign or Blue and BlueStacks, uh, also uh, in enterprises like uh, radio frequency uh, network. Uh, uh, Reno subsystems, also in AI, such as um, Unbabble, and so on and so forth. On on a year-on-year -year basis, um, the investments of IT corporates uh, went slightly down, as you can see here, from 5 556 uh, deals in 2016 that we tracked, down to uh, 523 last year. And uh, same is true also for, for total dollars. Just to reiterate Jeff's point, uh, the, the, total, um, the total dollar figures that we see here are um, total um, combined dollars of rounds, uh, not just dollars invested by uh, the corporates. So, um, so those figures were also down for 30, from 34, uh, 0.6 uh, billion down to uh, 31.1 uh, billion. Um, so the, the, there was a it was a slight drop, but nevertheless statistically significant and notable. Um, and uh, for the for the first half of, of 2018, uh, we we've tracked uh, we've tracked pretty much uh, 235 deals uh, worth uh, a little over. 21 billion dollars. Um, so um, things things appear to be more or less uh, more or less headed to uh, remain 
as you know uh, about at the level of last year but we'll, we'll see how that uh, how that turns out uh, by the end of december of course uh, the top investors among the uh, among the it uh, sector corporates uh, are kind of the usual suspects we have a diversified conglomerate alphabet um, internet company tencent and uh, semiconductor manufacturer intel among others um, top corporates invest uh, investing in it startups from the it sector and other sectors uh, we also have intel alphabet and um, also cloud um, cloud service providers salesforce along with others like samsung dell uh, e-commerce firm alibaba and financial firm fidelity for example um, as I mentioned, the uh, top rounds by IT corporates uh, were actually in, uh, in different sort of sectors. Um, very notably, eight out of the uh, top 10 uh, rounds stood above the 1 billion mark here. And um, the first three actually well, well above the 1 billion mark. Uh, we, had, we had a 4 billion round uh, raised by... Uh, uh, by the e-commerce firm Meituan, um, which was backed by uh, Tencent and International Data Group. Um, also, the uh, in a similar business, uh, Pinduoduo, which is a, a group buying internet uh, sort of platform uh, that raised $3 billion and it was uh, backed by Sequoia Capital and Tencent. And JD Logistics, which is the uh, logistics subdivision of uh, e-commerce firm JD.com, also raised a 2.5 billion uh, billion round backed by uh, Tencent and uh, China Life Insurance, among among other investors. Um, I'm not I'm not going to go into uh, much detail about uh, more of these. Uh, they're all described uh, in the magazine, so uh, feel free to read more on them in there. Um, in addition to deals, as you know, we also try to track exits involving corporate investors, whether as exiting investors or as um, acquirers sometimes. And we tracked 86 exits for IT investors between June last year and May this year. And those included 60 acquisitions, 19 IPOs, and four mergers. Once again, the vast majority of them, 57 of those 86 uh, in the United States and in US-based businesses. Um, on a year-on-year -year basis, um, things look, um, look slightly differently. Um, we had 69 exits last year in 2017, which was um, notably less than uh, the 95 exits we tracked uh, in 2016. And the drop was also significant and notable in, in terms of total dollar figures and in terms of the total um, exited capital estimated. Uh, from 21, from 21.3 billion down to 8.8 .8, billion last year um however during the first half of uh of 2018 we already tracked 44 uh such exits uh worth an estimated uh 28.95 billion so things appear to be more promising on the exiting side um which is ultimately uh what's important to uh any any vc investor uh, whether whether that's uh, a traditional VC or a CVC. Um, and, you know, some of the top exits uh, that we registered from IT businesses, uh, obviously we had uh, three huge IPOs. So we have to mention the uh, Dropbox, Pivotal Software and uh, DocuSign. So uh, as, as, as we all know, a Dropbox is a um, cloud file, cloud storage uh, sort of service. Pivotal and DocuSign are software developers, so those were quite significant, but not one of them uh, was was above the one billion mark. So uh, this is how things overall stood on that end. 
Um, in addition to exits and deals, we also track uh, any sort of uh, corporate back funding initiatives. So those include um, corporate corporate venturing units, new corporate venturing units that are being launched, um, any VC funds with corporate LPs uh, that get in the public domain and we report them as well as uh, corporate back incubators, accelerators, and other sorts, uh, sorts of initiatives and partnerships. So um, we did see um, a sharp decrease in, in, in those from 144 uh, back in 2016 down to 102 in uh in 2017 and uh you know in the dollar amount it, it seems even more extreme because for 2016 we do include a 99 uh, billion um 99 billion self bank vision fund which which is sort of an outlier and it skews the data a bit so uh we have to be mindful of that but in terms of the number of initiatives there was a there was a considerable uh a considerable drop that we see there um for the first half of 2018, now we see we track 38. Let's see how how it's going to go for uh, for the rest of the year. But it seems like it's uh, it's going to hit another sort of low. Um, and with in terms of the top funding initiatives, uh, the two the two uh, biggest ones worth mentioning was the Baidu fund partnership between Baidu and China Life Insurance, which uh, which is uh, which is a one billion uh, one billion dollar initiative uh, that will target um, the Chinese uh, startup ecosystem uh, broadly speaking, and then um, the uh, Xiaomi, which um, set up a a fund that's uh, dedicated uh, that will be that will be dedicated on India-based companies and will target India-based companies around the ecosystem of its uh, smartphones. Um, and this is this is not this is not too surprising, of course, because uh, India is one of the biggest markets for um, Xiaomi's products, and um, you know market research has shown. Um, Quite uh, quite a few times that uh, Indian consumers are concerned always about uh, having the the top notch uh, technology, irrespective of uh, the actual brand name. So um, that's kind of the the key for the success of the rising Chinese brand in uh, in India. Um, moving along. If we look at the government and university venturing and uh, how that stands, because uh, as Jim mentioned, we have uh, two other publications, sister publications. One is global government venturing, the other one is global uh, university venturing. So if we look at those uh, relating to uh, to the IT sector and um, innovations in, in the IT sector, um, we see that deal flow in university spinouts, uh, IT university spinouts, uh, remained uh, somewhat stable, more or less uh, the same level. Excuse me, more or less the same level in terms of uh, numbers: uh, 73 deals in 2016 and 71 in 2017. And um, for the, it, it, it's it's hit about the half, uh, the halfway mark uh, during the first the first half of 2018, so it will probably remain stable. Um, Dollar-wise, uh, it's about the same, just uh, just slightly over a over billion dollars of total estimated uh, capital backed in those rounds. And um, same for 2018, it's hit about uh, halfway there. Um, in terms of government-backed IT investments, uh, we see, we see that they rose slightly in uh, 2017 uh, to 134 rounds, uh, up from uh, 118 in 2016. And uh, in terms of total total dollar value estimated, uh, they actually more than doubled uh, from uh, slightly over a billion in 2016 to uh, more than 2.5 billion in uh, 2017. Uh, it remains to be seen how uh, how much uh, how much money we'll estimate by the end of the year. 
So um, that concludes uh, my part of the IT sector presentation. Uh, back to you, Jim, for the questions section, I suppose, or for any uh, concluding remarks. Sure. Yeah. But if there are any questions, we're, we'll open them up to, to that in terms of any thoughts or views on the analysis from Jeff and Kalia. So thank you very much, you both, for that. Certainly from my side, just um, one thought about the IT sector. I mean, we see it in this last chart and role of governments in terms of investing in the IT. They very much see it as a, a way of trying to leverage their own balance sheets to get some of these tech companies to come and play more of a role. But the other side of the question of what governments can bring is very much that sort of uh, what's, I suppose, the FT, the Financial Times today calls the Chinese Communist Party entangles big tech, um, you know, end quote. Uh, that's the headline that they've done from their big analysis. You know, and I think very much that we're starting to see whether it's the European Union finding Google five billion or a whole host of other sort of m a deals through Cepheus in the US stopping Chinese corporates which often have government links from trying to uh, buy out US technology companies that actually it's becoming much more strategic we see in terms of if you think about war you know the sort of the, the classic you know land sea air you know and then into space as the sort of four big paradigms that you know, military leaders have thought about, but actually the sort of tech, the cyber is very much what uh, the US military identified about a decade or so ago as the sort of fifth paradigm of being played on. So I think for a number of reasons, the IT sector is very much a locus point for um, attention, both for the good that IT can bring in terms of, you know, the value created and the enormous wealth it can generate. But secondly, you know, for the implications from a population strategically in terms of quality of life if you get shut out on the cyber race and i think you know very much you know the attention is on the us and china in terms of trying to dominate we see a number of you know singapore government investing more we see other governments trying to do more whether it's in the uk or france but very much it is a um a sino-american arms race that is developing in terms of understanding the it sector so i think it's one to watch and it's only going to get more significant and more systemic the data very clearly shows you know how important the industry is whether it's chips whether it's uh, artificial intelligence whether it's cyber security and i think you know if you only roll the clock forward the next five ten plus years that uh, those who get this equation right and think about it uh, more holistically than perhaps many people have done will really find it important. So great data. I think it really shows some great messages. So uh, any questions from the audience, from those in attendees? I think the, um, the main one is the slides and the recording will be available after this. But Jeff, otherwise I'll hand it over to you just for any final thoughts from yourself on the IT sector. Uh, and then back to Kalyan for any final thoughts from yourself. Otherwise, we'll end there and uh, say thank you very much. Enjoy the summer, enjoy August, and uh, we'll have the next webinar in September with a focus on the telecom sector. So, Jeff. Yeah, so this, uh, so overall, I think the IT sector is uh, very healthy. Um, I guess the one question I would have based on what's here is it seems like the funding initiatives, a, dr a large drop off in the last year or two in funding initiatives around IT. So I'm kind of curious, James or um, Kyle Lyon, if you guys have thoughts on why that is. Is it funding initiatives or focusing their energy in other places, or is the money coming through to IT in different ways? I'm kind of curious, because that seems so counter to most of what we saw here in terms of what was going on in the IT space. I think in some ways, I mean, if I chime in here, but can I do, mm -hmm. do that just yeah. as well? Please. You know, I think, in some ways, it's a reflection that most of the IT industry already have uh, corporate venturing units set up. So the sort of funding initiative you know, will reflect, you know, they might commit to third party IT funds, uh, but within the IT sector, if you think about it, Google, you know, they've got multiple corporate venturing units, GV, capital G, um, so one for AI, one for, you know, voice, you know, there's a whole host of what they've been doing. So it's hard to think really of any techie company that doesn't already have a corporate venture initiative being set up. Um, so I would say that might be one of the conclusions, but uh, Kalyan, uh, what, uh, what would be your thoughts? 
Um, yeah, it, I definitely agree with you. There is a, a certain degree of, uh, of maturation within the within the IT uh, industry in terms of uh, doing in terms of uh, corporate venturing, uh, as you mentioned. Um, another another reason for this uh, for this, of course, might be that some of the some of the biggest trends uh, that I described in the beginning of the presentation, whether that's uh, the datafication, IoT, AI, um, you know, any of those big, big trends and big horizontals, they are beginning to uh, to sort of mature. They are not like the big new, new thing, right? Um, so they're, they're beginning to not necessarily mature, but um, they have been already around for a couple of years. So um, my guess is that in a way, um, in a way, uh, within the previous years, as you can see, the uh, the IT uh, the IT corporates and, and corporates in general have have dedicated quite a few funds already. So um, you know, the right now it's just a matter of deploying those funds and finding the right finding the right sort of opportunities. If that makes sense. Yeah. No, I think so. I think that's an interesting one. Uh, you know, certainly if you think about blockchain or ICOs, there's a lot of attention. Right, there is also that. that. Yeah. yeah. And Dreesen and, you know, so I think there's some interesting areas. So, great. We've got a question in from Robert. Um, you know, slight different uh, opinion um, in terms of why we're seeing a drop off in the early stage. Um, uh, you know, find an alternative fund and um, he, his view, Robert's view is, uh, the opposite, the funding is seeking alternative investments. I all the non-smart money is going into the later stage scale-ups and unicorns because they can. Um, so slightly different of view in terms of why we're seeing this sort of a decline in terms of uh, of early stage. Uh, so different opinions, but any other questions? Otherwise, I think uh, we're coming towards the end of the hour, but I appreciate the sort of thoughts and feedbacks there, Robert. So thank you very much for that. Um, Robert Katz, that is. Um, uh, but any other questions? Otherwise, I will say thanks very much, Jeff. Thank you very much, Kalyan. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thanks, thanks everyone. Thanks yeah. all. Bye. Uh, bye bye. We'll have the next uh, the next webinar bye. in mid September. Bye bye. Bye.